This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Baby Blade. This is the Razor Blade Stealth for 2019, which has a new design. It looks just like the Razor Blade 15, only smaller, which is a good thing because, you know, the old lozenge shape with the kind of chevrons on the lid, now it looks so dated. It's just amazing, right? So very clean design, still anodized aluminum. It's anodized, so that means if you scratch it, the color doesn't come off like it would if it was painted. Matte black is your choice, does attract fingerprints, and not as much as really the blades from a couple of years ago did, but yeah. And the new quartz pink option, which is in your face, most definitely pink. It's not rose gold. This is, I got me some cotton candy kind of pink. If you want that, that's cool, that's your thing more power to you. It's still a slim and light 13.3 inch ultra book, 14.8 millimeters. You can see the weight on screen. So this year they did something a little special because when they first came out with the stealth, it was like, look, a 13 inch gaming laptop, which it never, never was because it was just an ultra book with 15 watt CPUs, no dedicated graphics. So now as we're moving up to Intel late eighth generation Whiskey Lake quad core CPUs, 15 watts, still not 45 watt like a gaming laptop like the Blade 15, but pretty powerful. We do have introductory level dedicated graphics. It's the NVIDIA MX150 with four gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. So it's 25 watt package. It's the more powerful version of the MX150. It's enough to give easier going games, some oomph. So Fortnite, League of Legends, even Overwatch, those would be much more playable than they would on integrated graphics. We'll talk a bit more about that. So that's pretty cool. But also for you pro apps users using say Adobe CC programs, you'll get that little extra oomph for video production a little bit faster on your, your photo edits, that sort of thing. We're gonna look at it now. So as always, Razer's laptops are really attractive looking, very well made, nice specs and prices to match. So this is not cheap. It starts at $1399.99, so call it $1400. And then in base level model gets you a Core i7, no matter what, you're gonna get the same Core i7 8565U inside quad core 15 watt Intel CPU. But you're gonna get eight gigs of RAM and you're gonna get a 256 gig SSD and a full HD matte non-touch display with Intel UHD integrated graphics, no dedicated graphics, which is fine to have that option because there are some of you out there who actually just want a well-made classy fast ultrabook. You don't really intend to game on it and you don't do Adobe Premiere day in and day out. So cool. If you go with the middle level model, which is what we have, that's $1599.99, $1600. You get a Core i7 because you get a Core i7 all day, all night, no matter which model you choose. You get 16 gigs of RAM. And by the way, they're using a DDR3 low power, not DDR4 here. You get 256 gig SSD again, but it's a PCIe NVMe SSD. The base model has a SATA 3 SSD. You get a full HD display still, but you get the NVIDIA MX150 graphics. And then there's the top of the line model, which is $1,900. That gives you all that stuff, but moves it up to a 512 gig NVMe SSD and a 4K touchscreen. The full HD display is matte non-touch. The 4K display is glossy and touch. Now that we've got that out of the way, yeah, it's a pricey proposition. It's going after the higher end of the Dell XPS 13 line. Um, Apple's 13 inch MacBook Pro, you get the idea of the, the placement there. It's the same as it always has been for razor blade. So the lid is a little more chill looking. You don't have to opt for the model that doesn't have the bright green razor logo on the lid anymore. It is just an etched black logo. Or if you get the pink one, you get the pink matching one. So it doesn't stand out too much. So this is a laptop you can take to work and you don't need to put a skin on it or anything like that. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and they're full four lanes. So those of you who want to use the Razer Core eGPU or a Thunderbolt 3 dock, you can do that. It also has two USB-A 3.1 ports. So yay, no dongle life for you. That's a good thing. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but still no SD card slot, no display port, no nothing else because you can use those USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports for that. Those would introduce dongles, obviously. As ever, we have a Microsoft Precision Glass trackpad, and it's an excellent trackpad. The keyboard travel, just like last gen, is pretty low travel. And now, it doesn't bother me as much as on the Blade 15. I don't know why. Maybe because of the smaller area you're typing on, something ergonomically feels a little bit better about it. But now it's not per key chroma backlighting. It is full backlighting. So you can choose any color you want, but the whole keyboard will be that color, including you can go for white if you don't want to stand out at the office, that sort of thing. And there's a couple of different effects you can choose from, and you have Chroma Studio and the usual Razer Synapse. Now Razer Synapse here gives you a content creation mode, essentially that ups the CPU performance, and there's a low power consumption mode, and then there's your average normal balanced mode inside. 
Also, it has a Windows Hello IR camera up top, along with the webcam up top. Now, we can't make too much of a joke because now Dell has moved the XPS 13's webcam up top, though they don't have Windows Hello because they couldn't find a camera small enough. When it comes to displays, like I said, we have the full HD display. They're factory calibrated now, and they're actually pretty well calibrated from the factory. You can see the specs on screen. It's a good display, as it should be in the premium range. This is not super wide gamut, but the contrast on it is pretty good. The color gamut does cover your sRGB spectrum. And then there is the 4K option for those of you who want touch, obviously, and a glossy display. And then there's the 4K option for those of you who do want the higher resolution. Maybe you are do vid doing video editing and you really want to see every pixel a little bit better. And that one, again, is glossy, too. This is a 60 hertz refresh display, no 144 hertz, but this is obviously not truly a gaming laptop, so that makes sense. Yeah. Now, there's a sea of 13-inch perfectly lovely premium laptops to choose from. Particularly in the non-convertible range, you have the Dell XPS 13, for example, the Huawei MateBook X Pro, which is a 14-inch, still pretty thin and light laptop. There are others. So what sets this apart? Besides the fact that obviously it's going to work very well with the Razer Core, which is probably a small subsegment of those of you who are going to use an external GPU to game on a little tiny laptop. But another thing that sets it apart is the cooling. Now we're going to take a look at the internals, and you can see exactly what I mean now. So as ever with Razer products, well, number one, they show fingerprints. You can see that here. But we have these rubber strips, and this one is a little raised, so it elevates for ventilation over here. And uh, the rubber strip picks up schmutz, but hey, it is very grippy. It stops the laptop from sliding. To take this cover off, it's always simple with Razer's. Torx T5 screws, you can see where the, they all are. Unscrew them, no nasty clips, and take this off. Notice the nice open ventilation area for the two fans. Notice that this is a lot like your typical gaming laptop design already, having those two separated fans in the ventilation areas. There for them, different from typical Ultrabooks. Good to see there. And here we have two, relatively speaking, very large fans for an Ultrabook and typical gaming laptop design. They're well separated from each other. The size of these heat pipes is really impressive. Uh, gaming laptops tend to have heat pipes as fat because, well, they need it. They have high-powered CPUs, 45 watts versus the 15 watts here, and more powerful GPUs. So definitely serious cooling. And these heat sinks here, that is some beefy metal going on there. And then we have some additional copper heat sinks for things like your VRMs and all those sort of components. So that's good to see. Here's our M.2 SSD NVMe, except for the base model, which is a SATA 3 if you go for that 256 gig model. Our socketed Wi-Fi card, Intel 9560 AC. That's a very good card. So pretty easy to service. RAM is soldered on board. Here's the 53.1 watt hour battery. And this has four speakers, not the usual two. And believe me, the sound does make a difference. More bass, louder and fuller than your average 13-inch laptop. They sound pretty darn good. So while we're talking about the cooling and the difference that makes, including, as you can see, when we have the Geekbench test going while monitoring temperatures, and the core temperatures are almost 20 degrees lower at times than something like the Dell XPS 13 9380 that just started shipping with the same Intel Core i7 Whiskey Lake CPU that we tested, the HP Spectre X360 13 inch gem cut. Look at the difference here. Here is our Dell XPS 9380. See the difference in the size of the fans. Though it is admirable that they have two fans on the XPS 13 because this does not have dedicated graphics, so you don't need one for the CPU and GPU, but it's still pretty good. Heat pipes here, big massive long things, more area to cover across the whole back by separating it, whereas this has smaller and much shorter heat pipes and a smaller heat sink also. We do a little Gore-Tex here to try to keep the heat away from you. So there you go. Beefy gaming style cooling in an Ultrabook with our stealth compared to a very good 13-inch standard Ultrabook. Also, how did they get the battery so small? This is a 52 watt hour battery. This is a 53 watt hour battery, but you can see that this one is actually a more compact design versus the Dell's battery. So what does that mean to you? If you're a very light user of your laptop and you're not pushing it with compiling a million lines of code repeatedly or doing video editing or uh, you know any of those heavy duty things number crunching lots of vms whatever it is then whatever but if you are the kind of person who pushes it hard so cp utilization is constantly high and therefore your core temperatures are running hot i always worry two to three years down the road is something's running near its thermal maximum it's going to have shorter life if the battery is going to swell from internal casing temperature it's not that it's going to fail in six months or a year but that long-term stress on components just nicer if it can run cooler so it's peace of mind the fans however because they are bigger are louder than your average ultrabook now if you take that 
HP Spectre X360 13 inch or that XPS 13, even when the fans are running full bore, there's still very little fans. So you just, you know, you hear like a shh, just a little bit. So with this, you hear a little bit more of a woo going on. It's not like a gaming laptop. It's not going to make you put headphones on and annoy people around you, but you'll hear it a bit more. Also, just because those core temperatures are pretty good doesn't mean that there isn't heat dissipation through the chassis. The bottom does get hot on this if you're really, really pushing it hard. Say you are encoding 4K video. I mean, that kind of thing. I don't mean streaming Netflix, you know, or even compiling a small iOS app, that sort of thing. It's not going to burn you, but it's going to get noticeably warm. The top, the palm rest area is always pleasantly slightly warm is how I would put it, but I have cold fingers. So hey, it doesn't make you get sweaty or something like that. It's not super hot, but it's always on the warm side. So yes, internally it's running cooler, great for components, but uh, externally it's going to be as toasty as any high performance thin metal ultrabook. So what about those of you who want a game without an eGPU on it? Well, for those of you who are on the road and you want to get a little Fortnite or a little Overwatch, it's perfect for those kind of games. They're not super duper demanding, believe it or not. If you want to play Far Cry 5, well, you could do it at 720p in medium settings and get about 30 frames per second at best. It's not really for AAA titles. Duh. This is still an ultrabook with very low-end dedicated graphics, but for a lot of you who are playing those more casual MMO kind of games, or like Fortnite, that sort of thing, it can actually do the job pretty nicely, and you can go to medium settings or even high and maintain about 60 frames per second, which is what you want for a first-person shooter kind of experience at full HD resolution. So not too bad considering what it is. So how about coil wine? Our particular unit does not have coil wine, nor does its charger. That doesn't mean that the one you get won't have coil wine. It's pretty ubiquitous phenomenon in today's laptops. It's where little capacitors inside sometimes make a little bit of a knee or a sizzling sort of sound, but this one doesn't have it. Battery life on this is another good story. Now, Razer said they actually went to the the unified keyboard backlighting instead of the perky RGB because it saves a lot of battery power. Who would have guessed? Who would have thought? It must be true. Intel Whiskey Lake, every generation with Intel gets a little more power efficient, that helps too, but battery life on this has been rivaling the XPS 13, which has always been a very good battery life ultrabook in that size class. So we have the Full HD display, which is going to use less power than 4K. Usually 4K cuts about two hours off of your battery run times. And we've been getting around eight hours easily doing moderate kind of work productivity, web browsing, some streaming video, a little bit of Photoshop, that sort of thing with brightness set to 150 nits. That's pretty darn good. Obviously, if you try a little harder with your power management, set the brightness down, you could get a longer runtime. This is better than previous generation of stealths. It ships with a 65 watt fairly compact charger, so 65 watts, so it can power that DGPU and also so it can charge a bit faster. Nice to have. So that's the Razer Blade Stealth, back again for 2019 with dedicated graphics, a redesign that looks pretty darn classy on this chassis, and very good cooling. So all is well. The price is high, but hey, that's how Razer rolls. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.